afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. And we are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And pause, please. Better. That was crooked and it was driving me crazy. I just noticed <laughs> it. I'm like, that is really crooked. Okay. Anyway, um, welcome to Toad TV. It is Tuesday, April 9th. Yes. 9th. And, um... Day after the eclipse? Yes. Look, we made it. We survived. <laughs> um, but we had an eventful day yesterday. Yes, we It did. was really quite an eventful day. Helen has put a video. Yeah, at the beginning I did a big before and after. Okay, so the, the tree man came. And um, Marty, thank you so much for the recommendation because he told me that he only goes by... All he's doing is um, referrals. Referrals or... Um, current clients and he's amazing yes. it was a uh, Zeus tree company and Alex is their arborist and he came and walked through the yard with us and talked to us about things that he thought we should do and things that we want to do and he had some concerns for th certain things like a magnolia that was leaning on the roof that he wanted to take care of we had concerns about a big old tree that's leaning over the sidewalk and dropping and branches. <laughs> um, so, and you know, trying to kill people. <laughs> so we um, we talked about it first, and then we made an appointment, and he came back and he did the front part of the property yesterday, and I just mean, just watching it, I would love to take credit for the transformation that happened in twenty four hours. But it was two guys, a couple chainsaws, and a wood chipper, and what they did. They totally transformed the front yard. Yeah, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, Helen heard a group of people walking by this morning, and evidently there was one woman who was in charge because she was the one that was talking really loudly, and she gets to the corner <laughs> of the property, and she's like, holy crap, what did they do? <laughs> it, you, I mean, there's no mistake in what we, that we did work. Yeah. Um, it but it, it frames good. the house so much better from the street, and... It leaves us sun patches so we can actually grow the grass back and just, oh my God, so good. Yeah, it looks really, really, really good. So um, that was yesterday on top of the eclipse and us trying to get the dogs in and out so they didn't disturb the tree guys. Right. Got to play with the tree di guy's dog because Alex brings his dog Snoop with him. Um, so they had time playing outside, but they couldn't be outside at all during the eclipse and that kind of thing. So it was... Um, we had two exhausted dogs. Yes. By the time the day was over. Yeah. But this morning, we were uh, clearing the front porch. We had stuff that we had had de out to decorate for Christmas that still hadn't gotten put away. It was tucked on the porch, that kind of thing. And moving our, all our garden tools to the back of the house kind of thing. Um, so the guys had probably an hour and 45 minutes just right. wandering the entire yard, sniffing, finding new things. It was... I Ollie, Ollie, Ivy's first time really getting yeah. to explore the backyard. I if, you're, you, if you're new here, we have a fenced off portion of the front yard, which is where they get to run all the time. And then the back is usually relegated to the other wild members of the denizen of the hollow. Um, but every so often when we're working back there, we close the gates and let them do the whole, run the whole yard. Right. And oh my gosh, after that, they came in and closed. Yes, <laughs> for like three hours they were asleep i mean at so, one point hugo just lay down on the driveway and he's just like yeah, i'm done <laughs> i can't do this anymore i mean i love being back here but i'm done <laughs> so it was so good because yeah. we got a lot of stuff done that we wanted to get done they got to run and explore and sniff and all that good stuff and it tired them out yeah there is a house that sold across the street that they have people in and out of doing work and then the house next to it had an estate sale a week and a half ago and anything that's left over is free for people to pick up so now people are going in and out of that one plus their landscape which are there today there are there's so much for these yeah. dogs to do i mean there is so much patrol amazon just to do just delivered yeah i mean it's crazy yeah it's absolutely crazy and we are late getting started so we are bordering on lunchtime people <laughs> And we've got a lot we to did, talk about. They, they did have a late breakfast because we're working. So. Right. All right. So what shall we talk about? I have two finished objects. Oh, by the way, before we get started, I am wearing the Dingley Dale by Isabel Kramer. I did it in crab picking and 
It was the pink from uh, oh, Alice. Alice. It's not. It's I'm late. I'm late. Crab picking. Like everyone with the white rabbit. I'm late. So, so it's fantastic. It's really really comfortable, and these colors are just spectacular. I They're really. I, I think I may do one. It, it was it was it was not a bad knit. I really kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. But yes. So that's what I'm wearing, and you are wearing. I'm wearing the Kala tee, um, and some pink. And I put it on. It's probably seventy. It's almost. It's like seven, close to eighty degrees outside. Um, it's the perfect spring it is. top. I'm like, we have to. I have to make more of these. Yeah, it's seventy five degrees right now. It's um, just gorgeous. So, just yeah. So quality in, and I'm, I I will make another one of these. I think, um, because again, I enjoyed knitting this one, and right. it's just just a comfort. I love the neck, and yes, and I love the patterning up on yeah. the the top um and the the color you can't go wrong yeah. with the color yeah okay so um i have a finished object i don't know whether i showed this on our regular podcast or whether i showed it on friday's podcast so this is my knitting at the library cowl part one i did it in the secret gardens collection i used all six colors and i did it to her specifications so whatever she said to do i did so it's perfect for the mini skate uh, it really pack. is um, this is my kind of cowl. It's not too loose. I like it to be warm around my neck because if I'm wearing something like this, it's because I'm cold right. and I don't want any air here. I want it to be warm up against my neck, but not too tight. Like it feels like it's strangling me. And if so, it's going to be that tight, wear it in fingering weight as opposed to a heavier weight. Right. Um, cause... I don't like heavier weights around my neck. I don't yeah. like anything really around my neck, but this, this I can work with during the winter. So these are the colors of the secret gardens. We have weeping willow, um, wildflower, uh, field of wildflowers, rambling roses, whims of wisteria, hidden entrances, and wandering paths. And that's just how that looks. And we are... The colors go so well together. <laughs> yes, they do. they do. We um, have sent out, they got picked up today, a whole ton of orders from the secret gardens and people are still buying them they are all still available so if you haven't gotten them yet and you still want to they are there right um but the mini skein packs are perfect because you get all six for 42 dollars and um you can and do it, all sorts of things right. with it and then you can decide which of the six if not all the six that you want to get in bigger right. skeins Somebody just got them where they got a mini skein pack and two of our silver bells from the pink Santa. So it's going to be gray, a really, really soft gray, and all of these. Oh, yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So that is my finished object number one. Okay, I have a finished object as well. I don't think I even mentioned that I started this. Um, I started him back in January on a whim. And uh, we'll get into why I decided to finish him. A little this, bit later, yeah. This weekend. Um, but the cat. Does he have a name? Not yet. Okay. He, he hasn't told me his name yet. Okay. Um, this is from Toft UK. It's from their Edwards Menagerie book. Um, it's the same book I, I knit the rabbit. I believe his name was Henry. Um, several years ago. But I used uh, the Dormouse. As I had a 50 gram skein of the Dormouse. And I absolutely adore how it made him stripey. Yeah. It's like he's a, 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 stripey, ta cat. a stripey tabby cat. I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, so. Even a stripey tail. I love him. So I finished him up on Sunday. I had had the head and the body done. Um, and I, I did his limbs and his tail. So. Very cool. He is very cool. Now I have to figure out how to knit him some clothes. We were we were discussing discussing that. Uh, so I just have to try a couple things out that I have planned. But he he should probably be clothed. But I love him. He's so cool. It is the uh, Russian cat that is in. That's the name of the pattern. Okay. Um, I think it's the Russian blue cat. Yeah, I think the Russian blue is a Siamese. Okay. So um, and he's got the look of a Siamese yeah. to him. So. Uh, cool 
is my finished object. Very, very cool. All right, my second finished object is my Mount Juliet shawl. I finished it. I cast off. It is done. This is by Helen Stewart. And this is how it looks. This one used, I did this using, um, again, the Secret Gardens. The only one I didn't use was Wandering Paths, which is the blue one. Because for this, she did it in two different colors. I did it in five. Um, but there are eight sections here where I would be putting different colors. So I decided to take four and just double them. So this is how it looks. It is gorgeous. It really, it's spectacular. It's and if I, such a spring shawl. If I put it on. And this is not unblocked. Yeah. But anyway, this is how it's going to lay so that you get the pink and all the different colors showing through the way I wear them so that it really... It works out very, very well as far as showcasing the colors. So, Mount Juliet by Helen Stewart. It took me quite, it took me about two months. No, a month and a half, maybe six weeks to finish. Seven weeks, probably seven weeks to finish. Doing um, other stuff. Doing other things, but um, yeah. Do you know how much you used of everything? I can weigh it out. I know I used more, a full skein of the pink. More than a mini skein. Yes. You you wouldn't be able to do this with the pink and the mini skin collection. I don't think so because um I'm pretty sure the white I think is gonna use the most. Okay, it might. I have seventy four grams left, but I did this in my cowl too. So I don't know how much oh, okay. I used in the cowl. So you could probably do it and you might have to adjust a um your biggest like your white what turned out to be your white section i'm not sure do I, green may have been my biggest oh because uh because i have two of them no i've got 76 grams of this yes yeah. so and you use more than five grams in the shawl i don't know um here weigh that and see what that weighs oh and the green maybe not Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight yeah. grams. Yeah. Okay, so that's six into seventy-eight is like eleven. So ten grams. Of twelve. Each. Yeah. Twelve. Thir almost thirteen grams. It is actually seventy-eight is thirteen grams each. So you add so, another ten. So your mini would be. Fine. Right, a mini cream, a mini skein might work for this. I don't want to have you do it, buy it, and then find out it doesn't though. So. Definitely, if you added the blue in. Yes, then you would definitely have enough. Then you would definitely have enough because you wouldn't be doing um, two, two of, of everything. everything. So this... So if you added the blue in, you could do the blue on the longest section or whatever. Right. Do one of them on the longest section and then do doubles on the other. Also, this would be really, really pretty if you did the white, if you took a full skin of the white and then you had all the other ones as your in between. Right. But I love the pink so much, I wanted the pink to be my main color. So, um, so one skein and a mini skein should get you the shawl with the possibility that you might have to shorten the last section. Yeah. But um, if you want to be really safe, Get the full six skeins, and then you're going to get a shawl. You're going to get, I mean, you're going to get a cowl, a shawl, and still have about 75 grams of everything except the pink. And six pairs of socks. And six pairs of socks. So that, I mean, you know, when you think about it that way, that's a, it's a bargain. great, great it's a, deal for, yeah. you know, $180. $180. And the joy of knitting all those right. things. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed working on it. I love doing it. Um, I have to put my needles away. But I really, really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to knit. The pattern was, once I got through the first two sections, then easily memorizable. And um, I didn't have to worry knitting. about it. And I could read the knitting, the lace pattern very, very easily. So I knew, oh, wait a minute, I did something wrong. I'm supposed to have a, lace, a yarn over here. Okay. So it was really, it was a good pattern. Really good pattern. So like that a lot and it looks gorgeous in the secret gardens 
Okay, while we're doing Helen Stewart, I will show you my 24 birds mystery knit along. If you do not want to see any of clue three, avert your gaze. Um, I have, I'm almost done. I have three rows left. Oh, wow. However, each row is 576 stitches because we did double okay. in clue three. Um, I am doing it in Rambling Roses, Weeping Willow, Winds of Wisteria, which is getting dangerously low. Yeah. And then Midwinter's Night. So those are my four colors. And they are all four now in the shawl. It's very hard. This is a circular shawl. Helen's going to show you her jellyfish. <laughs> so it's very hard to show you what it's actually going to look like. You just get to see how the colors play together. Um, so I started with the rambling roses and then you fade into the weeping willow, fade into the whims of Worcester. This is my favorite section, this purple and green. And now you're fading the whims of Wisteria and the, the midwinter's night. So ever since my little glitch and I put my stitch markers in, um, look at the stitch marker. <laughs> look at how many stitch markers. 70 billion stitch markers. I kept having to get up and go get another, another, uh, box of stitch markers. <laughs> stitch markers when I was, when I had the 576 stitches, but, um, still really enjoying it. Um, also sister number three was here this weekend and she was working on hers and she was having a problem in clue one, and once she put the stitch markers in, she's it, flying. It, it makes it, it makes all the difference in the world. It really does. Um, so if you're planning to do this, have stitch markers. Right. You have to move them around every once in a while because she moves your beginning of uh, beginning of round around a lot. But um, she's very clear in the instructions on how to do that. I am just about forty. I, a little over 40% done. Okay. This is going to be massive. Well, if you think about how it's like from here to here is 40%, but it's not going to be another right. one and a half long because because I've, it, you've gotten so yeah. wide and it doesn't look that wide because it's all scrunched. I mean, on I, the I'm on a 32 but, inch cord, so they're really scrunched up. Right. But, um, Oh, it's going to be so pretty. And she's putting, the clues are manageable for if the, if it's the only thing you're working on, for you to be able to get done each week. Right. Because I usually finish Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Um, And the clues come out Thursday mornings. So I just love the colors together. The colors are beautiful together. They really are. And I really can't wait till it's done so I can lay it out and see what it looks like. <laughs> see what the final um product looks like. Cool. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. That is a 24 birds mystery knit along by Helen Storch. Okay. Depending on how much knitting time, I, I might actually finish a day early and get to work on something else this week. Okay. Knitting wise, because I have other projects. As is evidenced by the next thing that I'm going to show. I have been working on other things. Okay, so I have something that is not yarn related at all that I was working on. Um, Helen got me the Lego Bugs collection. And I think I showed this where I did the Blue Morpho Butterfly. And I finished... The Hercules Beetle. Really cool. And then also the praying mantis. Can you imagine being the engineer that gets to make these? Yeah. I want a praying mantis in Lego form. Okay, okay. cool. So this one has little ladybugs and stuff on it. It's very cool. So these are on my, our mantle and um, I will add to them as I get more kits yeah. because I just had such a good time putting these together. It was a lovely way to 
um, kind of be my quiet meditation time in the morning. Yeah. You know, I could listen to my book and do some Lego and it got my day off to a really nice start. So. Next up, Snow White Castle. Um, we haven't purchased it yet. But... Uh, yeah, Snow White's Cottage is just so good. <laughs> However, and there's a greenhouse one that I want to get. Is it really? Yeah, it's a like a greenhouse. So it's oh, got cool. all the greenhouses and all the plants that go inside oh, in there. So. Very cool. Um, yes, I'm waiting. I'm not buying it right away because it is kind of expensive. So I'm being a little bit restrained. A little bit. We try. All right. <laughs> What's up next? Um, so, one of my morning projects is my Huga Burst blanket that I am working on. I have shown you all of these. I am picking four colors and then doing eight squares of different color variations in the four colors. Um, so, I had three. So 24 done, and I have started my next three, four colors. Not that. Not that. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. So I'm going with a bright. Okay. And I have three full ones done. And most of the fourth. Okay. Wow. So these they are, are pretty. They look really, really pretty. We have bags of DK minis and odds and ends from sweaters and things like that in projects. So that's what I'm doing is I'm just going into the bags, picking four colors that I like that go together. So this is the fourth one. So this is going to get the orange around to square it off. Um, and I need 81. I believe I need 81 squares. So um, I'm just working on getting my squares and then I'm going to use, we have the Dormouse, so that'll be what ties them all together. Very cool. Yeah, it's a, I, love, I love doing them. I know somebody asked me what was the granny square I was using and it's the Hugo Burst blanket. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, Okay, and it's spelled it. H-Y-G-G-E. Right, I will link it down below in the show notes. Um, very easy granny square. I've already memorized it, so. Um, if I can usually get a square, square and a half done in my allotted time frame while I have my cup of tea and everything before cool. we have to get our day started. And now it's getting to the point where it's really, really nice out, so you sit out in the front yard with the guys. Right. They can run around and you can have some time outside. Right. And just enjoy the outside. Okay, my last project that I am working on, I just cast on last night. Um, I had wanted to cast it on earlier, but it took me a little while to finish this, the shawl. So I am doing the Ozetta Moonset Tea. It's the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. And I am doing it in... Vintage Hydrangea, which was our newest yarn that we just released on Friday. So I will say we normally twist our skeins much nicer. It's yes. just we knew that she was going to be uh, using all of using, them. Yeah. I dyed them all for me to use. So this is what it looks like caked up. And this is as far as I've gotten. This is knitting. a sweater fully formed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm in the middle of a row. I apologize because I'm doing short rows, so, but anyway, it's very small, but that's what it looks like knit up. It's so pretty with that. It looks like vintage hydrangeas. With the little pink coming through? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure, I hope the pink is coming through. I think it's gonna be better when, A, it's not against the bright pink of my sweater, and B, you've got more to look at. Right. Um, but that's the way it looks right now. So it's a fingering weight sweater. With a V-neck. Using uh, size three needles. It's a really pretty sweater. It is. So this is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. I have it in my Good Notes, which is what all the stuff on the top is of the screen. But 
I love the way this is knitting up. It is going to be so, so pretty. It's going to be muted greens and pinks with little speckles of brown. Oh, perfect for spring. I just, I'm so excited about this. So I have to get past the short rows. Um, and once I get through that, it's going to be a lot better. This lighting is terrible. But that shows you the pink. So that's where I am with that. Hopefully by next week, I'm going to have a lot more done and I can show you more. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this weekend we were chatting with a friend of ours and she was saying that she was going to have a nice crafty weekend and she was going through a book she had just bought. Right there. Oh, okay. Um, and she thought she would pick some patterns from it and she would buy the book. Now this friend of ours is, um, we enable each other. We do. Immensely, because I said to her, I was going back and forth with her first, and I said, I am not allowed to buy more pattern books. I have to get through some of the things that we're doing. Um, but then I went and looked. And then I came in and said, please, I think you should get that one plus this one and this one. I was going to say, so I'm not allowed to buy any pattern books, but we bought four. Right. Okay. One of them was free on Kindle Unlimited. Right. And two of them we got for deeply discounted on Kindle. Kindle. Kindle right. Because we put them on the Kindle. So the book that started the whole thing. Have you guys seen this? Because these are all crochet. So... That's why I finished my cat. Because I'm like, I cannot start a new crochet stuffy until I finish my cat. Um, looking through this, these flowers are so hysterical. So you can start off practicing making a bulb. Which you could easily, I believe, if you're so inclined, turn into a mandrake root. I'm not going to bore you with everything. I believe this is the highest up. Heather. This is Heather. That's the carnation. Try not to show the pattern. The one that got me, she does them uh, in order of the season. So you start with your spring plants, go into your summer, and then your fall. Look at him. So now we're going to have a whole flower well, show the display. Back. Oh, I did show the back before. Okay, because look at this. This is a phenomenal picture. And now I need shelves right. that I can just put my flowers on so that I can have them out for people to see. So this book is only available in a physical book. Um, so while we were waiting, she also has, she has the vegetable uh, book, which came first. So the garden vegetables which are just hysterical. Oh my equally gosh. Equally hysterical. Uh, our sister, number three, is uh, she's a nurse practitioner and she's going to have a display in her office about eating your vegetables. So she's going to crochet some of these up so she can have her eat your vegetables, which I, we just love. Uh, <laughs> I have to tell you, the artichoke looks like he's ready to take somebody on. Right. He's just like in a fighting he, mood. He is an angry artichoke. Yeah. Um, I see like... Um, uh farmer's market basket yes where you just have as a display you have the right. vegetables in the farmer's market we basket. have a basket right back there yeah that's perfect like this, for yeah. it so you have a basket of the vegetables um so i started the carrot which is the first one in the vegetable book other than the onion the onion is your starter so this is how far i've come I will try and put a picture of the carrot here. I'm not sure how many pictures there are out there. Maybe on Ravelry I'll be able to see the individual okay. pictures. Um, but this is how far I have come. Again, using our DK 
Right. Uh, well, we had a plan. We were all going to be crocheting um, some of these things when we got together. We had a FaceTime. And, we uh, had a yeah a Sunday chat. We had a Sunday chat. We were all set to go, and we had our yarn picked out and everything. And then we went to get the the crochet hooks. We didn't have a single one that she called for. She right. calls for a C and a three point oh, and we had one D. We have so many H's and J's and right. K's and things like that. So I crocheted the cat in a D. So I just used the D to start the carrot. One of our deliveries yesterday were crochet. Because <laughs> we are God now we should just get ready. each get one. No, because you're going to keep it with a project right. and lose it and or something. And now we have a whole bunch of them. So I have a whole bunch of 3.0s and Cs. Well, no, I guess it's 2.5 and 3. That's right. what we got. So, oops. That's why I hate crochet. Because it gets caught on my sweater. Uh, so... Set. I have my crochet hooks ready to go. So it's mostly, I mean, like the, I know the stuffies are all single crochets or double crochet in UK terms. Um, that was part of my problem was I finished my cat Sunday morning. I was getting ready to do this and the book is UK terms. So it's calling for double crochets, which is what I did. I started my foundation ring with, and I'm like, why do I have so many big spaces? Oh, okay. It's the same yarn that I use for the cat. And, did, and then finally, like after the third try, I'm like, idiot. I was doing US double crochet, not right. the, the single. So, um, but for those of you that are not crocheters, the UK has a completely different set of terms for their crochet stitches. Same terms, stitches. they just mean different things. Right, so it's very d difficult to do a pattern unless you go in thinking, okay, I have to translate this over to this. Right. So anyway, nice tight fabric with the, the D as far as using uh, DK yarn. And I just really... It's going to be fantastic. I'm very excited about this whole project. Yeah, no, it's really, really cool. Um, so and we, I'm using up my DK leftover. So we got the UK, or I mean, we got the flowers and we got the vegetables. We also got her mini... Sea creatures and her birds. Right. So we had her birds that. was the one that was on uh, Kindle Unlimited. And we already have the Imaginarium and the Menagerie. Right. So we're really, really excited to start crocheting all sorts of creatures and right. vegetables and flowers and things like that and going through DK yarn. Like already my brain is like, okay, when we're done the podcast, then we can just start crocheting well it's for it's content we right. have to get it done it's, it's so my job it is it really is um i had to go let ivy out on the ivy front things are going so well i mean yeah so well with her 48 hours ago, well maybe longer a little bit longer than that like two three days ago we like turned a corner for her um it was actually after the earthquake on friday yeah it's like we protected her from the earthquake on Friday, and then all of a sudden things switched. She was freaked out during the earthquake, and we had an aftershock afterwards that was pretty bad. Um, okay, bad New Jersey terms. Yeah, it was a 4.0, and it lasted for like 15 seconds. Right. Um, it just shook the house. Right. But it freaked everybody out. <laughs> right. Um, but after that, from that point Friday on, she's been much more open to us right she does she lets us pet her i picked her up yesterday and she really liked it um she so, comes and she jumps up and she she reaches my waist so she kind of puts her arms on right. my waist and just leans into me and i mean and the whole thing with where we were worried about her with her leash because we had the whole issue of friday morning with her leash if you saw the friday live um you'd say that the word walk to that girl yeah and, I mean, she is just dancing. She'll come running and jump in Mary Beth's lap. Like, we're going for a walk. She'll run and get Hugo. We're going for a walk. Yeah. Um, she loves her walk so much. She loves her walk. Yesterday afternoon, we had to actually take them for a walk because the guys were working in the front yard, the tree guys. And, I mean, prancing her And she way. kept turning around to look at us going, I'm walking in the daylight. Right. <laughs> this is so cool. It makes me think that we should take some time to actually go for walks in the middle I mean, of the day because she just enjoys it so There much. was one moment where she just like sticking her nose to the wind and letting her ears fly back and prancing. Oh. Uh, so she just turned a total corner. I mean, knockwood house training, we turned the same corner. Yeah. Um, 
So, yeah, which is why really good. I just went to let her out so quickly because we're still learning cues and everything, but I don't want to regress. Right. So if she's moving around and up and dancing and that kind of thing, it's like, okay, get her out so that she knows. Yeah. Um, and she's getting over her scares a lot faster. Yeah. Like we got the bells for the door. We did this with Hugo where we, every time we go out, we bring them and say outside so that he got to the point where he would ring the bells for us when he wanted to go outside. Right. And, and we didn't have the bells here, but he still pawed where the bells should be. Then that's how we always knew that he was ready to go outside. Right. The first time I rang the bells, Ivy took off and was running around the entire downstairs like in terror. Right. So now I have learned I don't shake them hard. It's just a very, very light tap. So it's like a shimmer of a bell. Um, and she still was jumping back, but now it's she backs up a step and then comes right up to the door. And so, she hears the bells and she comes running. Right. Even if we're just like going outside and the bells ring, she comes running to go outside. So she so. is still very, she's a little bit skittish of noises that she's not used to. Um, but other than that, she's yes. doing really, really well. And sister number three and our brother-in-law came on Saturday and she had been terrified of them. Now, granted, the nephews were here and everything and she'd only been here for three days. Right. The last time they came, but it took her a little bit of time, but she would actually go up near them, um, not just hiding at my feet. She was out moving around. Right. Um, playing with uh, sister number three's dog, Garcia. So right. all three of them were outside playing and... My brother-in-law yelled at Garcia because he was being aggressive towards Hugo. She started barking at him. So you mad. don't yell at Garcia. Right. That's my Garcia. You don't <laughs> yell at him. And God forbid he try and pet Hugo. She was giving him lip. Oh, well, she was giving Snoop lip last. She was just like yesterday because you know, he was getting a little too familiar with Hugo. It's just you don't do that to my but, Hugo. So she's fitting in really, yes. really well. Yeah, really very, well. very, very good fit. Yes. So and she just had we are such smitten. a good time. <laughs> She had such a good time this morning in the backyard. She yeah. was, um, cause she, she goes running and she just sails over things. It's like a horse jump, you know, she goes If you over. think of the dog, um, agility trials. Yeah. Where they give them the, and you, the really athletic dogs just go sailing over. That's, that's Ivy. Yeah. Hugo is a barreler over, under, through kind of thing. Right. Um, he can jump over things and he's got power. But watching her, she's just like, whew. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's so much fun to watch her. And what's really good is we, every time we call for them, they oh, both showed yeah. up right away. So, Yes, she definitely knows her name, and she knows about coming, and she knows no, and that kind of thing. Drop it. She's really... She's really good with... Yeah. Yeah, she's very, very good. So, it's fitting in beautifully. I should train her for agility. Because mm. we have nothing else. Right. <laughs> Okay, um, I just have one more thing to show. Uh, one of the other things that came in the mail, I had ordered this before, but um, we got the Embark DNA test. So we're going to do this with Ivy and see who she is. Right. And see what kind of background she has. How um, many of our guesses are wrong? Right. In, for the Golden Retriever I have outside. Right. <laughs> okay, so I think that is about it. I think so. Yeah, um... Excited about all my projects, which is it's been a while since uh, I've been that way. Good, so, uh, very good. Really excited about the crochet stuff. Yeah, well, it's um, a great end product for not seven weeks worth of work. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, it's going to take much less time to do it, and you get something really funky and fun out of it. A good weekend, I could get him done. Okay. Um, and doing other things, but yeah, just love him. All right. So, how to get Mary Beth crocheting? Give her funky vegetables. I was gonna say fun vegetables and uh, and flowers. sea monsters and flowers. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Okay. All right. So we hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Go forth and create. And we will see you on Friday for our live podcast live podcast right. noon eastern standard bye, bye. <laughs>